Hi, this is George Gilbert on the ground at the Marriott Marquis at the Data Science Summit in San Francisco. I'm with Andy Twig, uh, Chief Scientist at Inside Sales, one of the hot companies that's uh, come out in the last few months. Um, Andy, why don't you tell us a little bit about the evolution of Inside Sales and then let's dig into uh, the technology and the application it's got behind it. Okay, sure, thanks. Um, so Inside Sales has been around a number of years. I actually joined um, as part of the recent acquisition of C9. Um, so that was uh, completed in May this year. Um, Inside Sales is basically a, um, a sales acceleration platform. Um, and it provides um, a whole bunch of tools for sales teams, um, primarily Inside Sales, as the name suggests, um, in order to um, generate better quality leads and convert these leads. And they use a lot of uh, predictive analytics and big data and machine learning to do that. C9 um, was more focused on the enterprise side. Um, so we had products that would um, look at companies' pipelines, um, sales pipelines, and we would uh, have, we, we had an application around uh, sales forecasting that a lot of people used. So the acquisition br brings those together to sort of expand you know, the, the reach from the top of the funnel down, down in, more into the sales so opportunity space. To, to paint that picture, um, at the top of the funnel, it would be improving the quality of the leads or improving the effectiveness of the inside sales force to bring a lead closer to the point of it where it becomes an opportunity. And then the uh, machine learning and predictive analytics would be applied towards figuring out, so what's the likelihood that any one of these is going to convert? Is uh, that about right? That but I think that's a pretty good read, yeah. So the, the, the software that Inside Sales had before, the power dialer, um, this is really focused on, um, you've got a, if, if you're a company of a large Inside Sales team, you know, making, you know, say 100 dials a day, you want as many, you know, two things, you want to make as many dials per day as you can, so you want to cut out the, the time researching prospects and that kind of stuff, um, but you also want to make uh, calls to the most um, likely, you know, the, to, the, to, the deal, to the leads which are most likely to convert to opportunities. Okay. All right, so that's a pretty clear explanation of the application. So tell us about some of the building blocks that made that possible. Um, I think the, the most interesting building block is the data itself. So Inside Sales has around 80 billion, I believe, uh, um, data points on all sorts of sales interactions. So these are um, data points associated with emails that people have made to reps, um, or uh, meetings, or um, phone calls, all that sort of stuff. Um, this is this is a really huge data set, and it allows us to do a lot of a lot of stuff. Now, how that data set sounds like it's a lot of personal data. How is that harvested, and how is it cleaned up? Um, it's first of all, it's um, it's all anonymized, so there's no um, yeah, there's, there's, there's no possibility of leakage there. Um, it's it's harvested primarily through the applications themselves. So when when the when when companies and reps are using the tools to do their day to day business. These things are collecting a lot of data about how people are using it. For example, um, when there is an email sent through the tool, it will register that, and it will register some interesting features about the email. And did the guy respond? Did he not respond? How long did it take? Um, how long was the call? Did he even answer the call? Um, so this isn't syndicated data. It's instrumenting the use of inside sales itself. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so inside sales really owns this this data set. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So then, now that you have this rich data set, um, what analytics um, are used on top of it to make the uh, sort of the forecasting and the prioritization more effective? Um, we use a variety of tools. Um, we use a lot of different machine learning algorithms, um, random forests and deep learning and uh, neural networks. Um, the main um, product uh, around data science and using the data set is actually called uh, Neuralytics. So it implies some use of neural networks, which, which, we, do, which we use. Um, can you tell us a little more about the combination of the, the tools that you're using and which contributes in what way? Um, is in, could you elaborate a bit more? Okay, so it sounded like you're using uh, different machine learning models. Right. Um, and so why would you uh, help us understand what each contributes and, and for instance, in the case of Neuralytics, right. what's its role? So the role of Neuralytics is um, as a platform to, um, to, to basically make 
the best use of this big data set for the applications that we have inside, inside sales. So for example, for the uh, dialing application, you know, this, this, this Neuralytics really provides a, a strong foundation to, um, um, to let the application know, you know, how should I order these leads? Which lead should I call right now? Um, that sort of stuff. And for our forecasting applications, allows us to determine, well, I've got these 10 opportunities or 100 opportunities in my pipeline. Um, what's the probability that this given one will, will, will close this quarter? How much is it likely to contribute towards our, our revenue at the end of the quarter? So it, it does a wide variety of, of things. Yeah. Are there, um, we've, we've heard of dozens, if not more, B2B marketing applications over time. Is this a generational shift where the other ones were mostly sort of tracking applications and this is much more on, you know, uh, forward looking? The other words, in other words, tracking were more like backward, backward looking historical performance reporting yeah. and this is more like let's use some intelligence to make better decisions about what we're going to do going forward. Uh, I'm not an expert in uh, B2B marketing. I would say, um, for example, lead scoring. There are many lead scoring uh, applications. Maybe these come under the same umbrella. Um, the main difference I would say between lead scoring and inside sales is that a lead scoring application, like you say, uh, is, could be a plug-in to Salesforce and it might uh, append each lead with a score. Or it might say, as a dashboard, like you say, historically, you know, you converted, you know, uh, these sort of leads with this pro with, with this uh, ratio. What Inside Sales does is it really takes that step further, right? Because it says um, it's more about how can we use this to, to drive actions, and you have an application there in which you can actually drive uh, action. You know, the people using it to, to dial. And because the machine learning has as its output predictive models, right. those go and get operationalized in the application directly without user intervention. That's right, yeah, they're embedded within the applications, yeah. And have you guys started thinking about you know, future applications of this sort of technology to go you know, even uh, steps further? Um, I, yeah, I believe that it does have uh, applicability elsewhere and I think that's, that's something that we're working on, uh, I mean, They'll be working uh, on, but can't talk about. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll have a big booth at Dreamforce, I believe. So okay. come back then. Uh, we'll have to come back then. Good. All right. Great. Um, thanks for filling us in. This okay, was no uh, very exciting. All right. Thanks a lot. Cheers. George Gilbert on the ground, uh, Data Science San Francisco.